Uh, I'm Professor Peter Robertson from uh, the School of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering here at Queen's University in Belfast. I'm a Professor of Energy and Environmental Engineering and I'm also a dyslexic. Now, a lot of people have said to me in the past, well, how can you be dyslexic and also be a professor? I must admit, while dyslexia quite often is regarded as a disability, I actually think it's been a real benefit to me throughout my career. It gives me a different way of looking at things, and while I would struggle with written words quite often, it takes me longer whenever I'm writing things or if I'm reading things. However, visual things uh, I can assimilate very, very quickly, and I quite often get the bigger picture, uh, particularly through, uh, as an engineer, where the visual uh, format is probably more significant than it would be maybe in other areas and other careers. It's interesting uh, how I ended up here because at school um, dyslexia wasn't something there was a lot known about. I think when my parents first raised it, uh, when the school called them in because they thought uh, I potentially was educationally subnormal, as the, a phrase they used to use back in the 70s. There, they suggested I might be dyslexic and the school said mm, that might be the middle class parents excuse for a, a, a child with lesser abilities uh, shall we say. I won't quite use the words that they maybe used at the, the time but school to me wasn't an easy ride and uh, I you know at the time a lot of teachers wouldn't have taken this on couldn't understand why I couldn't learn things like my times tables, couldn't learn the alphabet. Spelling completely um, uh, was, was just on another planet uh, for me. However, what I was very, very good at, again, was uh, visual things, and I could problem solve very, very effectively. And that's, again, something I think a lot of dyslexics are actually quite good, is this problem solving. I also probably had a reasonable amount of emotional intelligence because I could get people very, very quickly as well. Maybe actually it was in my A-level years that actually things started to improve and I had two very good teachers, one of whom was my senior housemaster, uh, who was also had taught me uh, physics up to a level, and one was my chemistry teacher who really switched on the whole subject of chemistry for me. And suddenly, at that more advanced level where there was a greater level of understanding required and less about rote learning, just things started to come together for me. And certainly at university, I suddenly found it, things a lot easier. And it was more about the understanding and less about rote learning. So I managed to get through my three years at university and I ended up with a 2-1 uh, in my degree and went on to do a PhD. And that's where, again, everything seemed to get easier because while there was a fair bit of reading and writing involved, mostly it was about experimenting and going out, doing presentations, doing oral presentations and things. Uh, and that really, really suited me. Also, at the end of that, I didn't have to sit exams. It was a case of writing up a thesis, which I could do in my own time and I had the tools then to actually really help with this because I typed up my own uh, PhD using one of the early home PCs and early software and that actually really, really benefited me uh, because it wasn't a case of having to handwrite things, uh, long script and then getting somebody else to type it. I could compose things and re rephrase them, rewrite them as I was going along. So technology was starting to come through there and that was such a big uh, issue for me that I suddenly had tools that were coming through that were really helping me. The great thing too, you submitted the thesis and then you did an oral exam and that absolutely suited me as well because again, if there was questions you were being asked, you, you could, if you didn't follow them, you would just ask the uh, examiners, sorry, I'm not quite sure what you mean with that. They'd rephrase it and you actually got more into a discussion. And I really enjoyed actually doing the Viva part of the PhD because it gave me the opportunity to talk about the science that I'd spent all those years doing and uh, also the related subject. So throughout my professional career, I've always been very open about being dyslexic. I remember talking to a colleague when I was living in Aberdeen about, oh, I shouldn't be open about that. That will be seen as a weakness. Well, to be honest, it, I'm different, but that different doesn't make me a 
a, a poor person, less good at my job. I just do things differently. And as I said, I think it gives me certain advantages for some things, some aspects of my work. I think it's important too that uh, people like myself are very open about this because there's a lot of children are still finding out they're dyslexic and it's an absolute minefield out there for both them and their parents because they assume that may, suddenly it means maybe they can't do things. Well, absolutely can. And equally, uh, as an academic, I'm very open to giving support to students and uh, students who want to disclose and discuss about their own dyslexia and talk about my experiences. My approaches can be very different from others. Things that work for me may not work for everybody. But the key thing to get across there is think of it more as potentially an advantage and not a disability. And why it's classified as a disability and we can, as a result, appropriate adjustments can be put in place to support uh, dyslexic people. But there are in this new world that we're going into and how things are changing, particularly with technology, I think dyslexia is actually going to be a benefit and not a disadvantage. So very happy. Anyone ever wants to talk about this? Very happy to do so.